over the weekend, President Obama has begun to talk about what his strategy for ISIS will be. <clears throat> and it's a coalition strategy. Uh, there was a NATO summit, uh, and he's certainly activating Europe, and he's talking about essentially that a group like ISIS can't be contained. It needs to be decimated. And I know that this raises a lot of red flags for people. Uh, and and it, it, it seems essentially like, look, there needs to be buy-in from neighbors in the region, both financially and in terms of intelligence, including places like Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates. Europe needs to play an active role, and air support will um, sort of run alongside backing the Kurds and the Iraqi army, which has already been happening. Uh, he also acknowledged that while uh, he still obviously opposes the Assad regime and views it, at, uh, views it as illegitimate because of its use of chemical weapons and its human rights abuses, that the calculus has changed in Syria and the prime focus of U.S. national security strategy is ISIS. Now, there's two things here that are major rubs, and Amir, uh, you know, talked about them. And one is, you know, you talk about the role of U.S. policy in the region. I, I, I will just admit to being incredibly ambivalent about military action because I think on some level I couldn't imagine how there couldn't be some given what the situation is. But now, of course, you know, ISIS isn't stupid. They, they used to be quite sort of <clears throat> easy to identify because of their vehicles and because of how they were operating in these conflict zones. And now they're kind of merging and melding into populations which make uh, it obviously much more difficult to distinguish between them and civilians. And this cycle, obviously, of us killing civilians, us not having a strategy, doesn't create ISIS, but it creates the context. Just like so the oppression of Sunnis created the context for ISIS to have momentum to capitalize on. Uh, that is a major problem. So The two things that I think need to be addressed and need to be thought about critically are, are, one, how to deal with the fundamental challenge with Saudi Arabia, because we have backed Saudi Arabia for decades. That's part of our key strategic alliance. I mean, our two key strategic partners in the Middle East are Israel and Saudi Arabia, and they both in vastly different ways have heightened the temperature on the region through the occupation and Saudi Arabia through the global funding and the global support of profoundly fanatical and narrow religious ideology, which we've also supported in certain contexts. And what ISIS is doing is ISIS is taking the Saudi model to its natural fulfillment. The, the ideology that they espouse is very similar to official Saudi religious ideology, just not buffered by members of a royal family who want to party in the French Riviera. So if we don't deal with the fundamental dynamic of Saudi Arabia and that system and our dysfunctional alliance with it, and of course that goes to our human rights policies, that goes to our dependence on oil, we're not going to get anywhere fundamentally. The other thing is, is that Iran, this is another opportunity. A BBC report that Iran and the United States were coordinating on ISIS have been de denied uh, by the Iranians, and that makes sense that they would deny it. But the truth is, is it's really time to not condone everything Iran does, to not, you know, uh, there's many, many, many problems, particularly domestically with this Iranian government, horrible human rights abuses. But to deny and to keep talking about Iran in this fantastical way that people talk about it, like it's some type of Armageddon apocalyptic threat is delusional and it's keeping us from solving problems that can be solved like we're in the process of doing this nuclear deal people are still trying to undermine it we have a convergence of interest of dealing with ISIS uh, and and cooling certain temperatures in the Middle East so if we're really going to deal with this and I would distinguish I think that this is something that actually really has to deal be dealt with for a myriad of reasons we need to really fundamentally rethink that whole playing field, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and what we deem soothing and pacifying influences. And fundamentally, that's going to go to these strategic recalculations, a totally fundamentally different view of human rights, 
and a completely different relationship to energy. And we've always known this, but we've not been up to the task of confronting it. And there's only so long that we can delay the inevitable of what needs to be dealt with. So I think this strategy has some steps in the right direction. It has myriad ways in which it could backfire. It has myriad ways in which it could fail. And there's still nothing here that doesn't stop the next ISIS, that doesn't stop the next sort of emergence of the context for something this problematic. <laughs>